Praise the Lord. It's good to give praise. Praises unto our King, for he is a mighty God and he is doing mighty things in the midst of us in these days, in these end times. Just want to read the scripture to you. And um, the scripture was um, heavily used back in the early 2000s. It was a, you know, books were written about it. It became a real, um, a buzz, a buzz scripture in the, you know, in the church back in, back in the early 2000s. And I um, always found that a little bit off-putting, to be honest, when things become too, you know, overly popular. Kind of, for me, it seems to take away the, um, take away the, um, I don't know, it's, can, you know, um, be a distraction in a, in a way. And we can sometimes lose sight of, of the true meaning of, of what God is trying to say. But anyway, I've just kind of opened up my Bible and opened up, bang on the scripture. And I just feel it's very important for us to read it and to let it sink into our spirit. Just a short little scripture. Um, 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 it's popularly, popularly, popularly called the prayer of Jabez, Jabez and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying oh, oh that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast or my border and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And it says here, and God granted him that which he requested. When we ask for something from the Lord that comes from the very depth of our heart, from the very longing within us, from a, a pure longing, a righteous longing, God hears it. He hears our prayers and he will answer. You know, the Bible is full of people that came to, cried out to God at the most deepest, darkest moments of despair, at the, mo at the most darkest hour. The Bible is full of people who experienced that very human state and condition to be in a place of deep grief, deep loss, deep sorrow, a place where you longed for something and you've had that longing denied. The door has seemed open and you've gone to walk through it and then it's shut in your face. And, and you know, for some of us, we've experienced that disappointment time and time again, over and over. And we wonder, is God with us? Have I done something wrong? Or, you know, even to the very extreme, am, am I cursed? Is some, you know, is, have I committed some crime that would, causes God to deny me over and over again? I would say to you, no. I would say that that is not God, but that the Lord has allowed us to go through the valley of weeping. He's allowed us to go through the desert of, um, of loss and sorrow. He's allowed us to have our hearts broken time and time again. Why? Because it's through those experiences of deep loss and grief that it's the very, it's the very hand of God that was molding us into the person he wants us to be. And that is to be able to, to empath empathize with others to be able to understand the grief of others, other than our own grief. I think it's a very, um, these very deep dealings within our soul that cause us to become Christ-like. You know, we say, Lord, make me more like Jesus. 
And yet we don't realise that to become like Jesus is to suffer the cross. It's to suffer the pain of disappointment. But I also believe there comes a time when God says yes. There comes a time when the door that has been shut finally opens. There comes a time after all the years of toil and of pain when the promise is suddenly fulfilled. And, and often that door opens at our most darkest, deepest moment of despair. It's often when it's the very place where the door is finally opened and we are able to go through. Many examples, many, many examples. For Hannah, she was persecuted by Penina because she could have children, but Hannah couldn't. She suffered what we call the barren womb. The barren womb is, is a very, is a, is a, um, is a continuing theme throughout the word of God. We meet women who are unable to bear children. And yet they are the very womb that God has chosen to bring forth the promise, to, to bring forth the seed of Christ. It's always through the barren womb, through the, the woman who had the, what the greatest desire of a woman deep inside is to bear children, is to have children. In, in the Old Testament, that was the honour of a woman, that was the crowning glory. And to have that denied is, is the most awful thing, the most, you know, shameful and, uh, and humiliating thing to experience. And yet all the great patriarchs, matriarch women had barren wombs. But I like to focus on Hannah because Hannah, she was persecuted by her adversary. It says her adversary uh, caused her to, fr to fret caused her to feel insecure. I could imagine that Penina would would um, taunt Hannah and say, Elkanah's not gonna love you anymore because you can't give her children can't give him children. He's going to he's gonna reject you. He's gonna divorce you. Because you're useless. You're no good to him. You might have all the looks, but you you're no good if you can't have a child. You better hurry up and, and, and get your miracle, Hannah. You better start producing the goods. I can imagine that pressure is on her every day. And every year they went up to that feast. And, and while everyone was enjoying the feast and, and having a great time of joy, Hannah was in deep sorrow, trying to hide it, trying to pretend that she's happy. But she came to the point where enough was enough. She'd had enough and she went to the right place. She went to the source of everything. She went to the tabernacle and she prayed and she cried out to God, Lord, if you will give me a man child, I will give him back to you. I will lend him to you all the days of his life. And you know what? That Eli, the high priest, saw her and thought she was drunk because she was praying and her lips were moving, but no sound was coming out. You know what it's like to scream in silence. No way to, to express what's deep in your heart, that sorrow and that pain. And I was experiencing that right at the very threshold of the throne of God. But you lie through, through the spirit of the living God said, the Lord grant thee the, the request which thou hast asked of him. And she got her miracle that day at her deepest, darkest moment of her life, that the door opened for her. And the prophecy through the book of Hosea says that at the, at the Valley of Achan, there will be a door of hope in the Valley of Achan. Hallelujah. I just felt that coming from my spirit this evening because I, I've experienced that. And I'm sure all of you know that to greater or lesser degrees, that sorrow, that longing and, and the years that go by and 
time and time again it seems to close in our face. But the Lord has never left you and he's leading you. He's leading you to a place of fruitfulness. He's leading you to your promised land. Hallelujah. The promised land cannot be reached except through the wilderness. I wrote this song um, about three years ago. For he walks on the waves of the ocean, he's the wind that blows through the trees. I will lift up my voice in thanksgiving. I will lift up my voice to worship Thee. For He walks on the waves of the ocean. He's a wind that blows through the trees. I will lift up I will lift up my voice to worship For he walks on the waves of the ocean He's the wind that blows through the trees Christ, come forth in me, my 
my will and way, my will and way, I yield to thee, I yield to thee. The barren sings a travailing song, oh praise his name, it won't be long. I will and way I yield to thee the barren sins a travailing song oh praise his name it won't be long the almighty Christ come forth in I will and way, I yield to thee. The barren sings a travailing song. Oh, praise his name. Almighty Christ, come forth in me. My will and way, I yield to thee. The barren sings a travailing song. Oh, praise his name, it won't be long. The barren sings, the barren womb. A travailing song as a woman goes into labour. She travails. The, the pain of labour bring forth a child in exactly the same way we travail within ourselves in agonizing pain to bring forth Christ Jesus the almighty Christ come forth in me my will and way I yield to thee. The barren sings a travailing song. Oh, praise his name. It won't be long. Oh, praise his name. It won't be long. Oh, praise his name. Won't be long. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love. And I took my my burden, an empty grave to start to prove my sin. God. 
because he lives and live one day across the river I'll find life's fine the war will be and the last gives way to victory I'll see the lights Lord ahead He lives. Oh, fear is gone. Because I know, I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. To hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still, the calm assurance this child can face a certain face because he lives. Teen Challenge program in 2001. While I was going through that program when I was 18 years old, my son was my son was being conceived within the womb. <laughs> I remember every time we sang that song, it always brought great comfort to me, especially when I would sing that particular verse. As I was unsure, I didn't know what the future held. There's so many question marks, so many doubts and thoughts going through my mind down what's going to happen. And that song brought me great comfort child can face uncertain days because he lives. And peace would fill my heart knowing that my God is in control. <laughs> my son was born on the 4th of August 2001. Still I was on the program, I wasn't even able to visit my son or be there at his birth or even name him. ended up with a Scottish name in the very country that I'd gone to go through that program in. I just knew the Lord, the Lord had 
our lives mapped out and he had my son's life mapped out. If you have a child and you're worried of the uncertain days ahead for that child, I want you to have hope that God has it. He has his life planned in the palm of his hand. And this child can face uncertain days. Why? Because Jesus lives. Because he is with us. There is hope. Elijah was one who came to a place of deep despair. So, so deep and so dark that he even had suicidal thoughts. Wanting his life to be taken. But the Lord strengthened him in his most desperate moment. The Lord strengthened him and revealed himself, not in the earthquake, not in the wind or the fire, but with a still, small voice. And he knew that was the Lord. He recognised that's the Lord. That still, small voice. Follow it. Follow the voice. He doesn't shout at you. The Lord does not lead you through barking down your ear or beating you with a stick from behind. He walks ahead of you and calls your name with that sweet, still voice. Follow him. Amen. Bless you all. I love you all.